Welcome to GRE. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. The star of the most popular house flipping TV show in history is here today. How did he do it when he had zero television experience and very little flipping experience and no connections either? His amazing story of perseverance is going to motivate you after a short housing market update and an opportunity for you to work here at GRE all today on Get Rich Education. With JWB Real Estate Capital, Jacksonville Real Estate has outperformed the stock market by 44% over the last 20 years. It's proven to be a more stable asset, especially during recessions. Their vertically integrated strategy has led to 79% more home price appreciation compared to the average Jacksonville investor since 2013. JWB is ready to help your money make money and to make it easy for everyday investors Get started at jwbrealestate.com slash GRE. That's jwbrealestate.com slash GRE. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Beverly, Massachusetts to Beverly Hills, California and across 180 nations worldwide. We're doing the right thing before we do things right. This is Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Before we talk with HGTV's Tarek El Moussa, apartment and multifamily housing construction continued its near 40-year high trend with 620,000 units started back in February. With all this active construction, plenty of empty units are going to be hitting the market throughout this year and next year. And you know, at least in the apartment building world, that new construction, what it should do is continue to calm down these big apartment rent increases that we've seen the past couple years. And you know what? That right there is a preferred way to rent control. It could actually even drive down the overall consumer price inflation to a manageable size. Yeah, that's the way to handle rent control and inflation. It's by building more, not with things like government intervention and price controls. Now, that there, that's specifically for the apartment world that has a lot of inventory coming online, like I've discussed with you before, but single family home construction is quite a bit more restrained. Only 830,000 units were started, and that is well below the pre-health crisis year of 2019, and it's even lower than the 1 million units historical average, and it's definitely lower than what's required given normal population growth. I mean, my gosh, in the single family space, I mean, it's becoming valid to wonder if there will be enough inventory to satisfy rising home purchase demand. I mean, sometimes you wonder if there will even be enough single family homes built to meet demand in your entire lifetime. So the market overall, it's responding to the solid rent growth and the low vacancy rates in both the apartment and the single family world. That's why they're building. And the bottom line is that a lot of apartments are being built to catch up to that demand, but still not many single family homes. And if you're buying single family rentals, that's where demand should continue to vastly outstrip supply, especially when you get into the entry-level stuff that make the best rentals. Hey, there have been some pretty big stories recently shared in our Don't Quit Your Daydream email newsletter here recently that we don't have time to get into here every week on the show because there's just so much important news to cover in the real estate world. So some recent stories from our newsletter. Biden threatens to end the 1031 exchange. Apartment sizes are shrinking. When the Fed raised rates at their last meeting, why did mortgage rates drop? Why Americans are expected to dump $1.1 trillion in stocks this year? And the revealing evidence from a good survey sample size that money can buy happiness after all. All those stories. And you know what else was in our newsletter recently? A GRE job offering. Yes, GRE is growing and we are hiring again. And for this particular executive assistant position, you get to work fairly closely with me. 
Yes, that job offer was in our Don't Quit Your Daydream email letter about 10 days ago. I don't know that working closely with me is any sort of benefit of the position, but, but somehow we've had a lot of applicants anyway. And the job offering shows you exactly what the hourly rate is that we're paying you. It is part-time up to 25 hours a week. And yeah, it shows exactly how much it pays. I mean, when I was younger and applying for jobs, it was amazing how frustrating it was that so often employers don't tell you about the number of hours you're expected to work and they don't tell you what the pay is before you apply. And we don't give you a pay range either in our job advertisement. No pay ranges where we try to do something like see how little an applicant would accept. So we are really transparent in the job offer. It's the same way I'd want to be treated. Well, you can get our letter by texting the three letters GRE to 66866. If you want coverage of the stories like I told you about and all future GRE job offers, they are in our letter. It is free. Again, text GRE to 66866. Or if you prefer, sign up free at getrichiseducation.com slash letter. I don't know if we'll put this particular job offer in the letter again this coming week or not. We might, but we do have some good applicants. We'll see. Incredibly, today's guest, Tarek Al Musa, had zero TV experience. He was also new to house flipping, and yet he got an offer to do a major house flipping TV show. He and I had time to talk off microphone, too. Now, much like me, neither Tarek nor I have deep construction knowledge. You're going to learn where his skill set is. And he has an uncanny way of scooping up deals in a place that you would never think of looking. I mean, I never thought of searching pending listings to get deals before. Tarek has always liked the name of our show, Get Rich Education. After this, if you prefer the video, the interview should soon be on our Get Rich Education YouTube channel as well. Let's hear his amazing story. Today's guest is probably best known as the longtime star of HGTV's Flip or Flop. The television program shows him flipping houses and walking through the different hurdles and obstacles and the houses themselves. And he now hosts a show called Flipping 101. And now you might be familiar with some of these shows. Well, he's the star of the most watched house flipping show in history. Welcome to GRE, Tarek El Musa. Hey, how's it going today? Hey, terrific. And, you know, before we talk about that turn that very few real estate careers take, that television turn, first tell us about your background and just how you got into the real estate business in the first place, sort of that origin story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there was one show that you missed. The newest show actually just came out. It's called The Flipping El Musas. So that's going to be my third show on the network. Really excited about it. So if, if you guys haven't seen that show, check it out. It's a ton of fun. The Flipping on Mooses, that's with you and your wife. Yeah, yeah. So the original show was Flip or Flop. And then concurrently right now, I'm shooting Flipping 101 and the Flipping El Mooses. But I wasn't always filming TV shows and flipping all these houses. So <laughs> I came up from a, a normal family in Buena Park, California. Both my parents immigrated from other countries. And, you know, I found myself graduating high school completely lost. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. And I knew I wanted success. And I just didn't know how to get there. And I was selling kitchen knives at 19 for a company called Cutco. I'm sure the listeners yeah. probably have Cutco in their kitchen right now. Right. But it turned out like I was a good salesperson because I hustled. I made my calls. I went on my appointments. But unfortunately, this was like 2002, 2003. So all my leads, all my notes were in a binder. And I lost my binder. So because I lost that binder with all my leads, I essentially put myself out of business. And I just didn't have the energy to rebuild a nice selling business. So I was trying to figure out what to do. And I'll never forget this day. I was at a Washington Mutual ATM in Cerritos, California. I'm looking at my ATM. I got almost no money left. And I had one of those moments where I went, ah, and I threw my head up to the side, you know? And when I looked, there was a crooked sign. The sign said, wise old owl, real estate school. So then I had what I like to call is a defining moment. And a defining moment is a moment in your life that changes the trajectory of your life. So then I thought to myself, I can sell knives. I'm sure I can sell houses. So in that moment, I looked at that sign and I said, I'm going to go sell real estate. So that's what I did. I walked across the parking lot. 
started taking real estate classes and I got licensed at 20 years old. My first like six, eight months in the business, totally struck out, man, made no money. I was young. I was hungry. I was motivated, but I didn't know what to do. I remember just being so frustrated, ready to quit the business. And one day I found out about a live event that was going into town thrown by a gentleman named Mike Ferry, who was a real estate yeah. coach. Yeah. So I go to this free event. It was at a Buena Park Sequoia Athletic Club. And man, I don't know if you've heard Mike Ferry speak, but this guy's a genius. Like he convinced me I'd be the top real estate agent in the world. He convinced me I could do anything. He convinced me anything was possible. Like he opened up my eyes to a whole new world because I had never seen a public speaker and I had never been inspired like that before. So at the end of the event, I handed him a piece of paper. I said, my name is Tarek El Musa. You don't know who I am today, but one day you will. And by the way, he knows who I am today. <laughs> so I ended up signing up for coaching. And at the time I was 20 years old. I was living in my mom's garage because my girlfriend and I had broken up. I tried to move back to my mom's house. My parents got divorced. So she rented out my bedroom to make extra money. So I was sleeping in a garage with cockroaches and spiders, you name it, spray paint cans, WD-40. <laughs> and that's my that was my home. It was awful. But, you know, I went all in and I ended up signing up for coaching. And I told myself, like, this is it. I gave myself 90 days. I said, you got 90 days to make it in real estate or you're going back to school. And I really didn't like school. So here's what I did. I started going after something called expired listings. An expired listing is a listing that was on the market that didn't sell. When that contract ends, it notifies everybody that the home is no longer for sale. So my plan was Monday through Saturday, 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. And then Sunday night, I would do a three hour shift. And all I would do all day, every day is cold call expired listings and for sale by owners over and over and over. And here's what happened. At the end of this 90 day sprint, I was 20 years old. I went from making $0 a month. In 90 days, I made $120,000 in commissions. Within two months after receiving those commissions, I ended up moving out of that garage and bought almost a million dollar house in Orange County, California. And I'll never forget being a 21 year old kid with this gorgeous house in the hills with this bathroom with an eight person jacuzzi and a plasma screen built into the wall thinking, man, I made it. You know, I thought I made it. I didn't even have any furniture. So my friends worked at the skateboard shop and we brought skateboard benches in as tables and, <laughs> and, we, and that's it. So that's how I got into real estate. And, you know, a lot of people say it takes so much time to make money in real estate. No, it does not. You can make money super fast in real estate if you know what to do. And that's the bottom line. It does not take years. Yeah. And it's the doing. I mean, there are so many lessons in what you told us already. You talked about, you know, basically a guru seminar that you went to, you got motivated. And a lot of people wonder, did those seminars really work? And I think the answer is they work if you do. It sounds like you were devoted to actually implementing those things, hiring the coaching and actually doing the thing. I'm the biggest fan of live events because yeah. that's a place for learning, a place for inspiration, a place for networking, a place for growth. Like you can't replace the power of being in the room of a really good live event. I'm actually throwing my biggest live event I've ever done in Scottsdale this year, April 28th and 29th. It's called the Flipping Summit. And we're going to have a couple hundred investors out there just talking everything real estate, house flipping, buy and hold portfolio you name it, we're going to be teaching. So that's something I'm real excited about. I made a name for myself pretty quick selling houses. And by the time I was 25, I had teams, I had nice cars, I was living the good life. You know, I was making more money than I had ever thought I would. Unfortunately, it turned out that I wasn't the smartest person alive because something called the Great Recession came around. Yeah. And that was a very valuable lesson. You know, I think I was about 25 years old. I had all these listings for sale and nobody was buying them. So I was making no money and I couldn't afford my mortgage payments. I couldn't afford my car payments. So I didn't lose anything. I just saw what was happening. So in this 2006, I sold my house, sold all my cars. And that was December of 06. I sold everything. And I moved out of this beautiful house, driving fancy cars. And I rented a tiny little apartment with a roommate. I sold my S500 Mercedes and BMW and my dad let me borrow his like 1995 rancher truck with no air conditioning. So I was back to rock bottom. I was like back in that garage. And in March of 2007, subprime market crash. And we all know what happened between 2007 and 10. So I struggled through 2007, struggled through 2008, 
2009, started doing short sales, making some money again. And I was doing incredible deals. And I did this one short sale transaction. And I got this deal from door knocking. I used to go knock on doors every day, thousands of doors. It'd be 110 degrees outside. I'd show up. I'm all sweaty. People would bring me in their homes. They'd give me water. They'd feed me lunch. You know, they felt bad for me. But I did this deal. I had a first lien, second lien, third lien, IRS lien, HOA lien. So... <laughs> I worked 11 months on this deal. It was a nightmare. At the end, I got a check for about $7,000. Oh my gosh, what a lesson. You either get the win or you get the lesson. Exactly, but here's the lesson. The person I sold it to, they hired a gardener to cut the lawn. They hired a painter to paint the inside of the house. They replaced the carpets. They sold it a couple of weeks later, made $130,000. Oh. So I was like, well, wait a minute here. I found the buyer. I found the seller. I knocked on the doors. I negotiated with the bank. Why is this person making all the money? So that was another defining moment. So that day I said, well, screw this. I'm going to be a real estate investor. <laughs> so that was it. So I said, I'm going to be a real estate investor. So of course, I went to everybody I knew and everybody said I was crazy. It was too speculative. I didn't know what I was doing. It was too risky. Everybody gave me every excuse and every reason not to do it. But of course, I don't listen to them. So why am I taking advice from them? They're not real estate investors. And here's the truth. You will never find a real, legit, credible real estate investor that tells you not to become a real estate investor. Right. So, right? Like, so as humans, we all get bad advice from our peer group. And that's who, you know, we surround ourselves with. That's why I think it's important to go outside of your peer group and listen to shows like this and come on platforms like this, where you can really educate yourself by some of the best professionals in the business, because this knowledge is free. This knowledge wasn't available 20 years ago when I was doing this stuff. So I finally found someone that said yes. And it turned out to be the only person that I knew that actually had money. And that was a real estate investor. So I said, hey, if I get a deal, you want to flip houses? Sure. I was shocked. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll do it. So I was like, okay, I got to go find a deal. So I went and bought a deal at the auction. It was a condo in Santa Ana. We paid exactly $115,000 for it. About that same time that I bought that condo, I went to another Mike Ferry retreat, but it was called the Superstar Retreat. This is years later in Las Vegas where there's about 5,000 people. I'm in the very, very back of this room because it's a huge auditorium. And a friend of mine was the vice president of a real estate company and two seats opened up right next to him. So he texted me, hey, come sit in the front. You know, to sit in the front, you got to pay a lot of money or be a VIP. So I took right. I took advantage of the opportunity and I, and I went up there and... At the break, this gentleman came up to us and I had seen him on stage the day before talking about how he made $800,000 a year selling real estate. And I remember thinking, how in the heck can anyone make $800,000 a year? That's so amount. much money, right? Yeah. I started talking to him. I'm like, well, what do you do? He's, then he started telling me how he had local TV shows in Palm Springs, California. I was like, well, what does that do? He says, well, I go places and people recognize me. I'm like, okay. Well, I mean, it's cool to be known, but like, what does that do? And he goes, but then they work with me and then I make money. I said, oh man, I was like, that is smart. The no like, and trust factor. Yes. Yeah. So in that moment, I wasn't thinking like I would go get on TV. I was thinking, man, this guy's smart. So we get back from Vegas. I think it was a day or two later. And I keep thinking about this conversation. It was like 10 o'clock at night. My ex-wife, Christina, she's going up the stairs. She looks over. She's like, hey, you coming to bed? I said, no, I'm not coming to bed. And I looked at her and I said, I'm going to get us a TV show. And then she started, <laughs> she started laughing at me. She's like, a TV show. What are we going to get a TV show about? And then I took a second because I didn't know. And I said, well, we just bought our first flip. What if we flip houses on TV? She shook her head, laughed at me, went upstairs. I immediately jumped on Google, typed in Hollywood production companies, went to websites, hit contact. And I just sent them my idea with our pictures. I woke up the next day. They said, send a home video. I got one response and send a home video. So on that very first condo I bought for 115, I sent the home video. I documented it and they loved it. I burned my feet with acid. I electrocuted myself, scratched all my new floors. Painted all right. The well, I mean, that sounds like interesting videogenic material, I suppose. But at this point, you must feel like maybe you're getting in over your skis. I mean, you had only been on your first flip at this point. Yeah. And th this is the home video. So then I send the home video. They love it. And then they come back. They're like, we're going to do a sizzle reel, which is a real professional crew and they make like a five minute mini episode. So what they do is they make the mini episode and then they send it out to all the networks. Nobody wanted it. We got no responses, never heard back. I'm like, okay. 
So I just kept selling houses and, and trying to learn to flip houses. And about nine, 10 months later, I got a call from the production company saying HGTV wants to do a pilot of a house flipping show. So the very third flip I had ever done was the pilot for Flipper Flop. So we shot it in summer of 11. And when it was done, I'll never forget. They said the odds of it getting a series, very slim. And if you do, it's going to take a long time. I swear, within weeks, I got a contract across my desk for a series to do 13 houses in 10 months on national TV. That's pretty amazing. And you're probably still having to learn a lot at this point because you aren't a very experienced flipper. I mean, you need to prospect for sellers and negotiate deals and walk properties and hire contractors and figure out how to retain those contractors and then get the property sold. Yep, exactly. So now they want me to do 13 houses in 10 months on TV. So I had two problems. Okay, problem number one. Well, I didn't have any money. (laughs) Problem number two. I have no idea how to flip houses. (laughs) That's a lot of houses. In 10 months, how am I going to flip 13 houses? So at the time, I called the only lawyer I had, (laughs) which took me on a a payment plan for the retainer. And I said, well, what's the worst thing that could happen if I sign this thing? And then he goes, well, they can sue you. I looked around my apartment. I said, they can have it. I signed that sucker and I told what, myself, what could I they possibly take? Yeah. Whatever it takes to make it happen. And that's exactly what I did. This is a great lesson in doing. I mean, this is jumping from a plane, skydiving, and hoping there's even a parachute on your back. Story of my life. All right. So now you're getting some exposure. You're getting some experience. It's not like you had experience being on television and maybe some people don't, but you really didn't even have any experience, any substantial experience with flipping and seeing the life cycle of a few flips. So did you just learn on the fly or did that really become part of the show? In fact, if you just kind of let the television producer know you're learning as you go, maybe it's actually more interesting for the viewer that way too. A hundred percent. I learned on the fly. I learned on camera and I was so stressed out. Like I didn't even care about the camera. So I wasn't nervous to be on TV because my entire life savings were on the line. I had investors money on the line and, and I didn't fully know what I was doing, but I was good at one thing. I was good at getting really good deals. Yeah. My specialty has always been negotiating really good deals when I buy real estate. That is what I'm best at finding deals and negotiating deals. So here's how I did it, because I didn't know how to buy all these houses. So I would work all day and film, you know, eight, nine in the morning till eight, eight thirty at night. And then every single night between like nine and nine thirty, I would look at all the homes in Southern California that were going to the auction the next day. And then what I would do, I would map quest them out. And then from about 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., I used to drive Southern California by all the houses that were going to auction. And The reason that I would drive by the houses is because I needed to bid on houses that weren't occupied. So the only way to verify if they were occupied or not was to drive by them. So there was sleepless months. And here's what happened. So I'd go drive overnight, you know, 30 houses, right? Get to the auction the next day. Of the 30, 25 were postponed. So then I'm down to like five to bid on, right? And then I'd go and my max bid would be 300. And then the next guy would be 320 and then 340 and then 360 and then 400. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm at 300. How are they paying 400? Because I was competing against the hedge funds. So I'm thinking, how am I going to get a house? But I did it every single day. And after a couple of weeks, I bid on a property and nobody else bid. And I got a house. And you know what I learned? If I kept showing up, eventually I was going to get lucky. So that's what I did. I just kept showing up and every now and then I'd get lucky. And that's exactly how I pulled it off. Yeah, there's a real lesson in both doing and in persistence here. So far, you're listening to Get Rich Education. We're talking with HGTV star Tarek Al Musa. More when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. GRE listeners can't stop talking about their service from Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They've provided our tribe with more loans than anyone. They're truly a top lender for beginners and veterans. It's where I go to get my own loans for single family rental property up to fourplexes. So start your pre-qualification and you can chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. They'll even deliver your custom plan for growing your real estate portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. 
Mid-South Homebuyers, with over two decades as the nation's highest rated turnkey provider, their empathetic property managers use your return on investment as their North Star. It's no wonder smart investors line up to get their completely renovated income properties like it's the newest iPhone. Headquartered in Memphis with their globally attractive cash flows, Mid-South has an a rating with the Better Business Bureau and 4,000 houses renovated. There is zero markup on maintenance, let that sink in, and they average a 98.9% occupancy rate with an industry-leading three-and-a-half-year average renter term. Every home they offer you will have brand new components, a bumper-to-bumper one-year warranty, new 30-year roofs, and wait for it, a high-quality renter in an astounding price range, 100 to 150K. Get to know Mid-South. Enjoy cash flow from day one at MidSouthHomeBuyers.com. That's MidSouthHomeBuyers.com. This is Entrepreneur on Fire's John Lee Dumas. Don't follow money. Make money follow you with Get Rich Education. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking with HGTV star of several HGTV flipping shows, Tarek El Moussa. He's telling us about how he transitioned from a real estate investor and how he leveraged that into a television show. He specifically wanted to have a television show. It's not like they came and found him, even though he didn't have television experience. And he actually had almost no flipping experience, even though the show is obviously about flipping properties. And tell us more about that, how you get going. I mean, you need to be able to find the capital from somewhere to go ahead and acquire these homes in the first place that you're then putting on television. Where do you get the money? Great question. So that original partner that said, yes, he would flip a house with me. What I was doing is I kept getting such great deals that he would have to partner on them because my specialty is finding amazing real estate deals. So these aren't like, you know, tight deals. Like I was finding really good deals because I was working my tail off. And because the deals were so good, the money just kept coming. You talk about your specialty and when people realize what their skill is and what their best and highest use is, they begin to understand the opportunity costs of those parts of the operation that are not what your best and highest use is. Maybe being that contractor, swinging that hammer, taking down that load-bearing wall inside a place. If you're doing things like that, you're not able to leverage your best and highest use, which is going out and finding deals. So was it sort of as the television show was unfolding and developing, you would do things like find the right contractors and this is all, you know, being on television? Yeah. So I learned a very valuable lesson after my first flip. I did most of the work myself. I was at that condo 12 hours a day, painting walls, doing trash out, doing demo, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of it, me and my partner, we split a check of 34,000. But you know what I didn't have? I didn't have any other deals. And that's when I realized, well, I don't have deals because instead of looking for deals that can make me 50 or 100,000, I'm taking out trash, I'm painting walls, I'm doing demo, I'm installing cabinets. So I never touched another house again. I learned the lowest use of my time is doing construction work. So like today, I leave all the work to the general contractors, the designing goes to the designers, the acquisition goes to the sales team, the leads come from the marketing department. So I've worked really hard to remove myself from the daily day-to-day of the business so I can really focus on the business itself. Now, some people, when they flip, they want to paint themselves and tank that paint roller over some drywall. And then they think to themselves, I'm saving myself a labor rate of $32 an hour if I do this myself. But sooner than later, you identified that that was not your best and highest use. It's putting other people in those positions so that you can go and do your thing. I learned some of this myself when I started out with a fourplex building, living in one unit, running out the other three. I replaced the vinyl flooring and put hardwood plank flooring in my own unit because a friend showed me how to do it. But the mistake I made is when the other three units became vacant at certain times, even though I had already learned how to do the skill and I had that knowledge, I went and did it myself in those other three units, laying the hardwood floor in there. When I already knew how to do it, I should have been looking at the next deal rather than laying planks with knee pads 
down on my knees through all these rooms. So I think it's a lesson. We all have to kind of make that mistake before we learn how to do it. And I know, Tarek, that you have some great ways of finding experienced contractors, something that can really be of help to listeners here, especially with this labor shortage problem that we've had. So tell us about some of your best ways of finding good, qualified contractors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so not all contractors are created equal. And when I tell people, the amount of time you spend looking for a deal, that's the same amount of time you need to spend looking for good contractors. Okay. Yeah. So when you're talking about contractors, if you're looking to remodel a rental or flip a house, are you going to hire the custom builder? No. Are you going to hire the custom kitchen remodeler? No. They're just too expensive and it's a totally different business model. So the number one most important thing in a contractor, they have to have extensive experience in working with other fix and flip and buy and hold investors. So I want to see a track record that they've been working with people like me for years. That's one thing I want to see. And then another thing is, where do you find them? The best place to find them is the houses themselves. So you can scour Zillow in any market, scroll through the photos, read the descriptions, and look at which ones are flips. And then you can check the tax records to see, was it a flip? How many times has it sold in the last year and a half, right? So once you identify the actual address, well, then you could call the listing agent. Just say, hey, Mary, my name's Tarek. I'm a homeowner in the area or, you know, I'm looking to buy a home in the area. I saw that you sold a house at 125 Main Street a couple months ago. I loved the kitchen. I really want to remodel my kitchen. Do you think you can give me that contractor's name? And that's how you do it. They might say no. If they say no, you call a different one. If they say no, you call a different one. And the goal is keep putting in the work until you find the people. If you drive a neighborhood and you see dumpsters there, that's probably a pretty good sign that there are contractors that did show up and do some work. So there are ways to find contractors, even amidst this labor shortage that we have. And Tarek, as I'm listening to you and I think about things, it actually does make more sense that they would want to feature someone on a television show for flipping houses that doesn't have it all figured out because people want to learn from those obstacles. You know, they're basically able to learn from your mistakes that you're having to overcome. And if everything goes swimmingly and perfectly and there's no animosity, it's probably not that spectator worthy. Absolutely. That's actually how I found Israel Batris, which was one of my main contractors on Flip or Flop. I was doing a project in Anaheim This contractor, I was three months in, nobody would show up, nobody was working, I'm screaming all the time. One day I drive out of my house, I turn the corner and I see a sign go up and I'll never forget thinking, yeah, good luck, you know, because I'm going through hell. (laughs) Three weeks later, I drove by that same house, it was done. The house was done and I wasn't even painting yet. So guess what I did? I called Izzy Betris, just driving neighborhoods. Yep. Who is actually getting things done? So tell us about maybe a couple of your other deals or where things went wrong in this process of flipping a house, all the way from prospecting for sellers in the beginning, all the way to getting them sold. What are some of those other things that went wrong, how you overcame them? Because that's what we can learn from. I mean, things go wrong, you know, buying tenant occupied properties where it's difficult to evict them. I learned a lot of valuable lessons early on buying out of state, not doing my due diligence and, you know, paying too much for houses. And these were years ago, but these are all the lessons you need to learn to find really big success. The only way to become super successful is by learning these lessons. And the only way to learn these lessons is by actually doing the work, right? So for me, I was always flipping houses. And then in 2015, I was making really good active income. I met with my CPA and... I owed a lot of money in taxes. Like I was like, wow, this is a lot of money. You know, you're talking about multiple seven figures, like a lot of money. As a California resident, especially. Yes. So I was like, well, what do you do? He's like, simple real estate investing. I'm like, I'm a real estate investor. He's like, no, you're a house flipper. Real estate investors, they keep the real estate. I'm like, okay, I get it. So then I was like, okay, I started learning and studying depreciation. So then instead of flipping everything, I started buying and holding. So I have about 200 rental properties across the country that I own with uh, my initial business partner that we bought that very first condo with. But then I learned something else. I have 200 houses and I'll be honest, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a logistical nightmare with all the different properties and locations and management companies and repairs. And then my eyes got bigger and I started looking at commercial real estate. And then I realized if I really wanted to get to the next level, it's not going to be with houses. 
it's going to be in commercial real estate. So I started in commercial real estate about 2016. A couple of years ago, I launched this company, TEM Capital. And you know we're a, a private equity real estate syndication company, and we focus on multifamily as well as self-storage. We actually just announced our newest deal yesterday, which is 221 units in Orlando, Florida. And we also just closed on 376 units in Northwest Arkansas. And then we're about to announce that we're building 138 units in North Hollywood. So what we do at TEM Capital is we partner with accredited investors. Oh, and I want to ask you more about that shortly, that progression into commercial real estate investing. But previously, yeah, that's sort of how I think of it. I think of flipping, it might be worthwhile, but that's more of an active business where real estate investing is more of the residual income, more on the passive side, the buy and hold real estate investor, where you actually get more tax advantages than you do in an active business. For example, as you learn with things like the depreciation or the 1031 tax deferred exchange and so on. But before we talk about what you're doing now, because you are such an expert at finding good deals in the beginning, you know, why don't you tell us about an example of finding a good deal and just how you go ahead and do that? I mean, for example, do you think it's even spending any time looking at the MLS when you're trying to find the next deal? A hundred percent. So I had one rule when I was actively looking for deals. Okay. My one rule was simple. I was not allowed to go home to my family unless I had 50 conversations a day. That's not 50 attempts. That's 50 conversations, yeah. with 500 attempts. So I was making 50 contacts a day, six days a week, 1200 contacts a month, having conversations with homeowners. And that's how I would generate leads. I'll give you a good example. One day I was out in Eastvale, California. It was uh, 2010. And that's when everything was a short sale. So I bought a lot of short sales and it was like 110 degrees outside. I went knocking door to door because I was still selling real estate too. So I ended up getting the listing on this thing. I put a sign in the yard and then I got a buyer. I double ended that deal. And then I just started knocking around it to let everybody know I double ended it. But now I was looking to buy. So I went, I knocked the whole neighborhood and I got to the end of a cul-de-sac. I knocked on the door. I said, Hey, my name's Tark. I'm interested in buying, you know, whatever. And right away he said, yeah, I'm interested in selling. Come in. Just like that. Just like that. So those two houses ended up making me over 150,000 just from knocking on doors. Another thing that I really loved is calling on pending properties. Okay. So most people, they see pending and they're like, oh, it's already sold. Right. When I see pending, I said, oh, there's a chance it falls out and nobody's looking at it. That's smart. Especially in today's market. So uh, I think about five years ago, it was a sales rep first day on the job. And I told him, I want you to call on every pending property. And I gave him the list. He called on this property in Newport Beach, California. When he called, the agent said, we're falling out of escrow as we speak. If you're interested, I can move you into position. We did it, same deal, same day, okay? Ended up making over 300,000 from cold calling on a pending sale. It works that, if you work. That's a, that's a great tip that a lot of people won't think about. They would dismiss pendings, but when a sale is pending, who knows what else might happen? Maybe the appraisal doesn't come in where it needs to. Maybe the borrower's financing isn't there. Maybe there are inspection negotiations between buyer and seller that aren't going well and haven't been settled and you just gave them another option. A hundred percent, you know, and, and deal finding. There are so many ways to find deals. And, and at my company, Homeschooled, where we're teaching people is we go over all the best strategies and the best ways to find deals because not all strategies are equal. I'll give you one example. Print mail. Print mail is not equal. You can send one piece, get zero calls. You can send another piece and get a huge response. The problem is people don't know. They don't understand that they need to find the right piece. So I've done a lot of trial and error in order to know what works. So now I know what works. What's the message on the postcard? What color is the postcard? All those sorts of, of marketing size, things in order to get the conversions. Yep. The size, the message, the feel, the look, the coloring, you name it. It's all very important. Well, if we've learned anything, we learned that you are a real doer and you really take calculated risks, but you have so many interesting ventures that you're doing today. You mentioned one of the commercial ventures, you mentioned a school program that you have for educating. So why don't you tell our audience more about your resources today and how they can connect with what you're doing? Absolutely. So, I mean, the best way to follow me is on uh, social media. It's at the real Tarek El Musa. But my house flipping company and wholesale company is Targ Buys Houses. 
If someone's out there and they want to take their business to the next level as a real estate investor, as an active real estate investor, I have my homeschooled by Tarek community. They should check that out. If someone's an investor that's accredited and they want to partner with me on some incredible commercial deals, they can go to temcapital.co. And then my newest company we just launched in January, it's our solar company. And we actually broke the industry record for the most systems sold in our first month in business. So a lot of different things, all in housing. I'm passionate about two things. One, teaching people how to invest in real estate. And two, investing alongside with them. Well, congratulations. That is a lot of success on so many fronts. Is there any last thing you'd like to leave our real estate investor audience with, Tarek? However big they're thinking, think 10 times bigger because whatever you think, you're going to achieve. And it's very important to have the right mindset as an entrepreneur. So as I've gotten older, my thinking's gotten bigger. And if I would have been thinking bigger sooner, I would have been farther. So again, whatever your goals are, make them 10 times bigger and you're going to get there faster. Even if you start small, you can still think big. Tarek, it's been valuable. Thanks so much for coming onto the show. You got it. Thank you. There are three resources for you from Tarek in the show notes today. And since this is Get Rich Education Podcast episode 443, they are all at getrichseducation.com slash 443. Tarek is a grinder. The dude gets his grind on and he goes all in. And recognizing that one piece that he's really good at, which is finding and negotiating deals on rundown houses, that was key. And from there, he hired out everything else so that he could go all in on what he's good at. And see, by doing that, not only does your business get efficient because you're in your lane, when you're doing only what you're good at, you're probably also enjoying your work more too because you tend to enjoy doing what you are good at. It appears that he had a stroke of luck with getting onto TV perhaps, but like they say, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. So Tarek really made his own luck, if you will. Most flippers that I talk to, they really want to be buy and hold investors. And that's where a lot of flippers end up. Well, that's why here at GRE, we kind of skip the flip and we talk about how to be an investor from the beginning. When you know how to optimize real estate pays five ways, now you know how to buy strategically. So that's why we focus on the long-term buy and hold strategy here. But we talk about flipping a little bit here, like we just did today. Sometimes people want to flip earlier on so that they can get some capital formation for down payments for their buy and holds. Well, again, if you are interested in real estate investing in wealth mindset, that's what we do here. That's what we discuss on this show, but there's a great supplement to the show for things that we just don't have time to cover here, and that is with our Don't Quit Your Daydream letter. We even have an executive assistant position open now, and nobody left GRE. We are creating a new position, and you'll get to work closely with me on this particular position. You can get our letter by texting the three letters GRE to 66866. If you want coverage of key real estate investing stories and all future GRE job offers, and maybe this particular position will be advertised one last time, that is all in our letter, which I write myself. Again, text GRE to 66866, or if you prefer, sign up free at getricheducation.com slash letter. Until next week, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.